Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our playlist, Pulmonology. This video is video number 26 in the series. Please watch these videos in order. In the previous video, we started talking about lung physiology. We talked about normal, quiet breathing, inspiration, expiration, and stuff like that. Today, we'll talk about lung pressures. We have three types of pressures. Intrapulmonary pressure, transmural pressure, and intra plural pressure. Those are really important for you to remember. And let's get started. The intrapulmonary pressure is the pressure in the lung or in the alveoli. This can be positive or negative. The intrapleural pressure is the intrathoracic pressure, which is the pressure between the two layers of the pleura. And this is always negative. We're talking about normal people here. Transpulmonary, also known as transmural pressure, is the pressure that actually inflates the lung is the difference between one or two and this is always positive for the pros transpulmonary pressure and intrapleural pressure have the same amount but they have different charges intrapleural is always negative transpulmonary is always positive translation if the intrapleural pressure is negative six at that same moment, the transmural or transpulmonary pressure is going to be positive 6. Same quantity, but the sign is different. Let's talk about intrapulmonary pressure, which is the pressure inside your lung or inside your alveoli. Accor according to Boyle's law, when you inspire and inhale, the volume of your lung increase. <sighs> so, the pressure is going to decrease because according to Mr. Boyle, the relationship between pressure and volume is inversely related. So, the greater the volume, the lower the pressure. When you inhale, you increase the volume and decrease your pressure. When you decrease your pressure, it's going to go to negative 1. What do you mean by negative 1? I mean that at that moment, let's say the, the atmospheric pressure is 0, it's minus 1, it means it's below atmospheric. As you know from physics, negative pressure pulls stuff. So it's going to suck the air in. <gasps> That's why you breathe in. The opposite happens during expiration. When you expire, you're decreasing your lung volume. <sighs> so you're increasing the pressure according to Boyle's law. Therefore, your intrapulmonary pressure will rise above the atmospheric pressure. When it rises above the atmospheric pressure, this pushes the air out. <sighs> at the end of inspiration and at the end of expiration, the pressure is atmospheric inside your lungs. Why? Because during mid-inspiration, your lung expands. The pressure decreases, creating a suction force to pull the air in. Then the air enters into your lung to fill the void because nature hates the ether or the vacuum. When the air fills the void, it raises the pressure. Therefore, at the end of inspiration, your pressure is back to atmospheric. From negative 1 at the mid-inspiration to 0 at the end of inspiration. Same thing in expiration. During mid-expiration, lung recoils, decreasing lung volume, increasing pressure, which pushes the air to the outside. As the air exits, the pressure decreases till it reaches zero at the end of expiration. So mid-expiration, we were positive one. End of expiration, we are back to atmospheric. So before I breathe in or out, if I'm atmospheric like now, I'm zero. I breathe in, <gasps> negative one. But at the end of inspiration, <gasps> zero. Okay, then I can breathe out, <gasps> positive one. At the end of expiration, <gasps> zero. Oh my gosh, I hate these graphs. Shut up and calm your butt down. If you understood the previous slide, this is going to be a piece of cake. Okay, so lung volume is here in blue. When you inspire, we increase your lung volume. Easy, right? <sighs> the lung volume increased to the maximum. And then you expire, <sighs> back to normal. Easy, piece of cake. Okay, the intrapulmonary pressure, which we have just talked about, which is the pressure inside the lung, is here in purple. As you breathe in, the volume increases. According to Boyle, the pressure will decrease. Like this. When the pressure decreases, it pushes the air in. The air comes in, 
and the pressure starts to normalize because now there is air filling the void until it becomes atmospheric. Piece of cake. Now let's expire. We are expiring now. <sighs> the lung volume is decreasing. The pressure is increasing, pushing the air to the outside and now it's back to normal. This is the atmospheric. So before you begin inspiration, the intrapulmonary pressure is atmospheric. At the end of inspiration, it's atmospheric. At the end of expiration, it's atmospheric. The crest and the trough are at the mid inspiration expiration. The highest and lowest values are here. The greatest deflection is in the mid inspiration or expiration. Fine. Now we'll talk about intrapleural or intrathoracic pressure. Calm down, it's easy. Let's talk about intrapleural pressure. Why is the intrapleural pressure always negative? If you remember my words of wisdom, because the pressure inside the pleura is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the chest wall, which wants to expand, and the lungs, which want to recoil. This, when two surfaces go away from each other, they create a negative charge or a negative pressure in between which prevents them from departing. It's like your histology slides. Bring two glass slides, put a drop of water or oil in between them. Okay, now try to not slide but separate them by pulling them apart. As you try to pull them apart, there are two surfaces moving away from each other creating a negative pressure in between which prevents you from pulling the slides apart it's impossible to pull those slides apart if they have a drop of water in between this is how your pleura works two surfaces parietal pleura and visceral pleura visceral pleura is covering the lung from the outside parietal pleura is lining the thoracic cavity from the inside and they have a very thin pleural fluid in between why does the lung tend to recoil? It's called surface tension and elasticity. Why does the, just the chest wall tend to expand? Because of elasticity. But it has to be like a spiral spring like this. Okay, you know this? All right. Because when you push it, okay, and leave it, it tends to expand. Same as the chest wall. Your chest wall is confined in your body. It's confined by, by your body itself and by the lungs. But if you would leave it alone on its own, outside of the body, it tends to expand. Okay, I get the spiral analogy, but I don't think that my chest wall is like a spiral. Okay, think about it. You have external intercostal muscles like this, and then you have underneath internal intercostal muscles like this, and they are kind of perpendicular to each other. Same thing as the spiral. Same idea in physics. As the lungs wants to recoil and the chest wall wants to expand, a negative pressure is created in between called intrapleural pressure, which in turn keeps them close together. Let's talk about intrapleural pressure. Now we're gonna inhale. Okay, you inhale. <gasps> Your chest wall is expanding. It's moving away from the lung. When two surfaces move away from each other, they create a negative pressure. That's why the pleural pressure is becoming more negative. This negative pressure will help suck the air in and increase the lung volume. Fine, I get it. Until we go to the end of inspiration. Now we want to get the air out. The lung has recoil tendency. The lung has a recoil tendency and when you expire your chest wall is decreasing its dimension. As it decreases it comes closer to the lung pressure becomes a little more positive, I mean less negative. So your intrathoracic or intrapleural pressure is always negative. Between negative 5 and negative 7, it's always negative. It becomes more negative at the end, not the mid like this one, like the intrapulmonary, no, at the end of inspiration, and then it becomes less negative at the end of expiration. We got it. So this is intra pulmonary pressure and this is intrapleural pressure. The difference between them is called transmural pressure. Fine. And this is the pressure that actually inflates the lungs. If you want to measure from here which is 0 to here which is negative 7, don't say the distance between here and here is negative 7. The distance is not in negative. The distance is always positive. This is plus 7 pressure. We mean centimeters of water. 
If you want to measure this transmural pressure between here and here, it's going to be around 5. So it ranges between 5 to 7. Remember, I told you intrapleural pressure and transmural pressure have the same amount, amount, but different charges. So 5, when this is 5, this is negative 5. When this is 7, this is negative 7. Let's say that someone stabbed you in the chest. So here is your nice chest wall, and then there is a stab wound, and then there is your chest wall. Now your pleura is connected to the atmospheric pressure, so the pressure becomes atmospheric, not negative. Don't say negative, it's atmospheric, okay? And don't say positive either, it's atmospheric. So we get it. Now what's gonna happen if your intrapleural pressure is not negative? The lung tends to recoil until it reaches relaxation volume, which is one liter, which is very, very little. The chest wall tends to expand until it reaches its relaxation volume, which is five liter, because the negative intrapleural pressure was due to the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the chest wall, which wants to expand, and the lung, which wants to recoil. But now there is no negative pressure, so the lung will tend to recoil and the chest wall will tend to expand. Okay, now let's say tension pneumothorax. Now tension pneumothorax is different. There is actually a valve. You're, you know your tire of your car? Okay, when you inflate your tires with air, you, you have a valve. Why? Because the valve lets the air into the tire, but it doesn't let the air out of the tire. That's why we put a valve on the freaking tire. Without a valve, you inflate the tire, it deflates, you cannot drive. So, when you have tension pneumothorax, air comes in, and for some reason, a valve-like mechanism exists. This valve will allow the air to come into the pleura, but not to exit. This will raise the intrapleural pressure into positive. Not negative, not even atmospheric, but positive. And this is tension pneumothorax. That's why the pleura on this side will push the mediastinum towards the negative side, and you will have tracheal shift towards the normal side and away from the affected side. Now let's talk about this negative intrapleural pressure and why do we call it intrathoracic pressure? The relation between the pleural pressure and the esophagus. Do you know? You know that the negative pressure in the pleura. The pleural pressure is negative. We know that. Therefore, negative pressure pulls. It pulls on the esophagus and open the esophagus to increase the volume of the esophagus. What happens when you increase the volume? You decrease the pressure according to Boyle's law, which states that the relation between the pressure and volume is inverse, provided that the temperature remains constant. Now, the pressure of the esophagus is decreasing until it becomes negative. Okay, now let me ask you this. Do you think the pressure in the esophagus will be equal to the pleura or slightly more or slightly less? Now, some people may say, like, maybe there is a teeny tiny variation. Wrong. They are exactly the same. The pressure in the esophagus is exactly equal to the pressure in the pleura. Otherwise, let's say that the pleural pressure is more negative. The esophagus will keep expanding into an oblivion. Let's say that the pressure inside the esophagus was like more negative than the pleura. It's gonna shrink until it collapses to oblivion. They have to be the same. That's why we call the intrapleural pressure intrathoracic pressure. Because all of the structures inside of the thorax, whether it's esophagus or an artery or a vein or a, like a, a lymph tract or whatever, lymph duct or whatever, all of them are the same and they equal the intrapleural pressure. That's why we call the intrapleural pressure intrathoracic pressure. Now, let me ask you a smart question. Let's say I would like to measure the intrapleural pressure practically in the lab. How should I do it? A stupid student might suggest, oh, insert a needle into the pleura. Oh, oh, shut up. So let me get that straight. Do you want to cause pneumothorax just to have the privilege to measure the intrapleural pressure? Shut up. So how do we do it? You measure the intraesophageal pressure, baby. How? By an intraesophageal balloon. You insert a tube into the patient's mouth or nose and then they go to the esophagus. And once in the esophagus, they measure the pressure in the esophagus. And as you know, it has to equal the pressure inside the pleura. Voila!
that's why we call it intrathoracic pressure. Fine, and thanks to the negativity of the intrapleural pressure, it helps with the venous drainage, the venous return from your legs up to your heart. It's all because of the negative intrapleural pressure. It sucks the air in and it sucks the blood up so that it can go to the right side of the heart so that you can pump it again and live happily ever after. And that's why patients with severe COPD or patients who have a problem in their pleura and the pressure in the pleura is positive, they end up with ankle edema, baby, because now the pleural pressure is not negative, it's not pulling the venous return upwards, the venous, like the veins are stagnant with pressure and with fluid, increased hydrostatic pressure leading to edema. Is it a transudate or an exudate? Answer, transudate. Is it pitting edema or non-pitting edema? Answer, pitting edema. Why does that pleural pressure becomes more negative during inspiration? Because during inspiration, the diaphragm descends, the intercostal muscles contract, especially the external, the chest wall expands, creating a negative pressure, pulls the air in, the lung expands. The more the lung expands, the more it acquires a recoil tendency stored as a potential energy. And the more the recoil tendency, the more negative the intrapleural pressure is. Since the greatest expansion of the lung occurs at the end of inspiration, therefore the maximum negative intrapleural pressure occurs at the end of inspiration. What's the normal value of the intrapleural pressure? It's always negative. It's negative 5 to negative 7, there is the range. Negative 5 at the end of expiration, negative 7 at the end of inspiration, so it's more negative at the end of inspiration. Can the intrapleural pressure become positive? Yes. With a stab wound, this is called pneumothorax, you have to say tension pneumothorax, because in spontaneous pneumothorax, no, it's not going to be positive. So we have to say tension pneumothorax. Val solve the maneuver, okay? During defecation or maturation, what do you do? You close the glottis huh, and then you contract. You decrease your chest wall's dimension. Huh, uh, that's Val solve the maneuver. So the intrapleural pressure is increasing because the two surfaces are coming closer to each other. When the intrapleural pressure becomes positive, you can force the stool or the urine or the baby outside of your body. It's actually disgusting to talk about micturation and defecation in the same sentence as childbirth. I apologize. Can the intrapleural pressure become less negative? Yes. The healthier the lung, the more the recoil tendency, the more negative the intrapleural pressure. But in emphysema, you have decreased recoil, you have less negative intrapleural pressure. Let's talk about the intrapleural pressure. Normally, negative 5 to negative 7. Okay. Can it be less negative? Yes. Negative 4 to negative 1 cases of emphysema. You have less negative, therefore less ability to pull the venous return upwards. That's why people with severe COPD end up with ankle edema. Can it be zero? Yes, at the moment of birth. So when your age is zero, your intrapleural pressure is zero. Or stab wound without a valve. Or a spontaneous pneumothorax. In spontaneous pneumothorax, a pleural blip, blip just ruptured into like an alveolar blip ruptured into the pleural cavity. And since the alveoli are connected to the atmospheric pressure, this pressure is going to be atmospheric, which is called zero. Can it be positive? Yes. Stab wound with a valve called tension pneumothorax. That's why there is mediastinal shift towards the normal side. Or with valve salva maneuver. You close the glottis and you force your chest inwards. The two surfaces come closer to each other, creating a positive intrapleural pressure, forcing the stuff outside of your body. Please pay attention. Valsalva maneuver. Positive intrapleural pressure. Therefore, decrease the venous return that's going to the heart. That's why elderly patient, while defecating, 
when they do the valsalva maneuver for a long time, they can decrease their venous return and pass out in the bathroom. You gotta be careful with the valsalva, man. It's dangerous. Let's talk about the transmural pressure, which is the actual pressure that inflates and distends the lung. It's the difference between the intrapulmonary pressure and the intrapleural pressure. This transmural pressure is a measure of the lung elastic forces, which tend to collapse the lung, also known as recoil pressure. Recoil pressure is the same thing as lung elastic force pressure is the same thing as transmural pressure. Normal value. I said it's the difference between interpulmonary and the interpleural. So here's the interpulmonary at the end of inspiration. It's atmospheric. So zero minus negative seven, which is the interpleural pressure, equals seven. Next, at the end of expiration. So interpulmonary is zero. Interpleural is negative five. Zero minus negative five is positive five. And I've told you before, the value of the transmural pressure is the same value as in the intrapleural pressure, just change the sign. Intrapleural is negative, however, transpulmonary is positive. Now let's tell the whole story and get the flip out of here. You inspire your lung volume increase. <gasps> as the volume increase, the pressure inside the lung decreases. This is called Boyle's law. Okay, next, air comes in. As air comes in to fill the void, the intrapulmonary pressure increases and back to atmospheric. Then you expire. <sighs> you are decreasing the lung volume and increasing its pressure until the air exits and it becomes atmospheric. Let's talk about intrapleural pressure. Okay, you inhale, you expand your chest. <sighs> the lung expand. The greater the expansion of the lung, the greater the potential energy stored inside the lung as recoil tendency. This recoil tendency creates a negative intrapleural pressure and it becomes more negative as your lung expands. As you're filling your lung with air, as the lung expands, the intrapleural pressure is becoming more negative and it treats its peak at the end of inspiration. Then after that, the lung collapses. <sighs> as the lung collapses, the recoil tendency stored as potential energy starts to decrease and the pressure rises to become less negative. That's the intrapleural pressure, always negative. Transmural pressure is the difference between intrapulmonary and intrapleural. At the end of inspiration, between here and here, this is the distance is seven. So we call it seven centimeters of water. At the end of expiration, from here to here, and this is five, baby, and this is the centimeter of water. Which pressure is the pressure that actually expands the lung? It's the transmural pressure. That's why it's increased at the end of inspiration and decreased at the end of expiration. You're struggling to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinus, Staph, and Streptin E. coli? Check out this amazing website called Picmonic, Pictured Mnemonics. For medical students, nursing students, pharmacy students, etc., please see the link in the description below. And they are not a sponsor of this video, but they are awesome. Thank you for watching. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon so that I can make more videos in the future. Just $1 makes a difference with me. And I'll send you my notes, my cases, and my audio notes depending on your tier. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. Saying thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionals. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Until next time.